In this topic, we will discuss the cell switching mechanism for the HSDPA channels and describe the power control mechanisms available in HSDPA. In general, there are two types of mobility, RAN mobility and core network mobility. RAN mobility involves mobility across node Bs and RNCs, while core network mobility involves mobility across SGSNs and GGSNs. HSDPA does not influence core network mobility. RAN mobility could be in the idle mode or in the traffic mode. Idle mode RAN mobility remains the same, while the traffic mobility is affected only for the new HSDPA channels. HSDSCH mobility management has two aspects, measurements to support the handover process and transmission over the traffic channel. The UE measures the strength of the pilots that are in the active and neighbor set and reports these measurements to the RAN. This measurement process is the same for both Release 99 and Release 5. However, the traffic aspect is completely different in an HSDPA system. In an HSDPA system, only one cell transmits the packet to the UE. There is no softer or soft handover for the high-speed data transmission. This cell is always a member of the active set. Let's look at the measurement aspect of the HSDPA handover. Node B sends the measurement control message to the UE on behalf of the RNC. In the message, the UE is instructed as to the quantities to be measured, such as pilot strength. The UE also gets information about which pilots should be monitored. The UE is also directed to report the measurements periodically or based on events. The UE monitors the strength of the neighboring pilots. It reports the pilot strengths periodically if instructed in the measurement control message. For event-based reporting, the most important event is 1D, which is the change of best cell. As soon as the strongest cell changes, the UE reports the measurements to the RAN so that the RAN can make arrangements to send data from the new strongest cell rather than from the old weaker cell. After the RAN receives the measurement report that shows a new stronger cell, the RAN sends a message to instruct the UE to stop the HSDPA operation in the current cell and to start the HSDPA operation in the new cell. If the stronger cell belongs to the same node B, an intra-node B handover occurs and the RAN can use a physical channel reconfiguration message to execute the handover. However, if the stronger cell belongs to a different node B, an internode B handover occurs and the RAN can use the transport channel reconfiguration message to execute the handover. Let's look at a handover scenario in an HSDPA system. The UE is getting packets on the HSDSCH from node BA. The UE now moves to the area where node BC is the strongest cell. Now the question is, how will the UE start getting data on the HSDSCH from the new node BC? Before a handover occurs, the UE is doing an HSDPA operation with node BA. In other words, it is observing the HSDSCH and HSSCCH from node BA, and node BA is observing the HSDPCCH from the UE. After a handover occurs, the UE starts the HSDPA operation with node BC. Now it is observing the HSDSCH and HSSCCH from node BC, and node BC is observing the HSDPCCH from the UE. Note that node BC must be part of the active set.